Legions Imperialis finally has a launch date, and this weekend we should hopefully be able to pre-order it. And that means I need to get back to printing and get myself prepared for it. So I've got a whole host of all of these different like road parts and like buildings and other things as well to play with, but I still got some more bits that I want to get onto the board. So hopefully that way, if I do manage to get one pre-ordered this Saturday, I'll have a massive city bit for all of my models to play in. In my last video, I printed off a whole load of different buildings, road pieces, and some just bits of terrain, I'm using a whole bunch of resin and FDM that a Saturday sent over to me, and now I need to print off some more bits. I started printing off this big, like, city wall as well, and that's going to be part of, like, a spaceport that I'm working on, but I also need some more buildings and a lot more of these road pieces as well. So my printers are fired up, and they are running like mad as I get loads of these different bits printed off, and fingers crossed this is all going to come out nicely. So pre-orders go live this Saturday, and then apparently it comes out two weeks later. And I'm not too sure. I'm a little bit nervous, because Games Workshop have kind of dropped the ball, in my opinion, with this launch. It's just been postponed and put back so much, and we've had, like, no news on it, and everything else has gone off sale as well. So whilst I was waiting, I was hoping to pick up, like, a few different Titans and other bits as well, but, like... Titanicus, all of that is just gone, and apparently it's all down to rebranding and everything there, so I'm not too sure what's going to be available on Saturday, so hopefully I'll manage to get one pre-ordered, I'll let you know probably partway through this video, but in the meantime, I'll be working on the rest of this city print. So once everything had been printed, it was time to get it all primed, and I kept this relatively simple. So I grabbed a couple of rattle cans, I used some ash grey by Army Painter to do all things like the roads and all the buildings and everything else, and for the big spaceport walls, I used this silver, and then I hit them with some retributor gold from above, and I really like this for anything like metallic, like big metallic buildings and stuff like that. Hitting them with silver all over first and then gold from above, I don't know, it just kind of gives it this almost like worn, rusty type feel with doing very little else. Once that was done, I had to let them all set and then it was over to some of the painting stages. Okay, so I have printed everything off and got it all primed in this grey, but now I have the problem that I've got to paint it all. So my thoughts are I'm going to mix up a wash and a couple of different colours, throw some blacks and some browns and everything else on there as well, maybe go heavier in certain areas, and then go back in and pick out some of the details, because at the moment everything is just grey, which is fine, I've got some terrain, I've got plenty of time to do it, but things like the roads, some of the buildings, everything, I want them to really stand out and just kind of show up on the battlefield, because otherwise it's all going to be this big muddy grey thing and I may as well just use like cardboard boxes. So I printed off all sorts of different things, obviously I've got all these different road pieces, and if you watched my previous video, originally I had the Neptune 3, which I printed some of these off and they didn't work particularly well, so I printed them off in resin as well. Actually, now that I've got the Bamboo Labs, these road pieces come off perfectly and they fit together really nicely. I've also decided I wanted to print off things like objectives and everything as well for different players to go off and capture. So we've got these like spaceports and airports and everything. I've got all these little random houses, which might sound weird, but I figured they could be like a residential area that one team's got to evacuate, one team's then got to either capture. A couple of ruins, although I haven't gone too heavily into that yet, and that will be something to do in the future. And then there's just all sorts of different buildings. I've got this big wall as well. It can be a lot of fun, but a lot of stuff to paint, so I'll probably end up doing it in stages. Wish me luck. So I got bored of using a paintbrush, and I realised this is kind of the perfect dippy-dippy bit. So I've been dipping in all of these buildings, but they're quite small. I wonder how far I can push it before it just gets ridiculous. I don't have anywhere to put this at the moment, so I probably shouldn't dip that. But let's dip a building. Yes. So this wash... It's been all right, to be fair. I, I've definitely added too much dish soap to it. That was really difficult to say, dish soap. So it's basically just water, dish soap, some cheap craft paint that I stole from my son again. And if he finds out, he'll probably hunt me down and break all my models. There we go, that, that works. That's faster than painting it on. So I can do this. Um, another mistake that I have made, or it might not be a mistake, probably will be because nightmares happen, but I haven't tested this. So I've literally just made up a big batch of wash and I have jumped right on in. Now this could be a disaster because yeah, I don't know. It could like bubble up all over the place and go crazy. I guess we'll find out at some point. So that, that's a problem for future Sean. So surprisingly, that paint actually came out pretty well. It's not the most consistent thing ever, but it's good enough to go onto all this terrain. Once I'd got all of that done, it was over to the painting table to add a few different colours on there. And I went with just a lot of bright colours just to kind of pick out some details on it. And I've not done the whole thing, but I managed to get enough on there that it looks pretty good, at least in my opinion anyway. 
For all like the windows and everything, I went for this like sky blue type look. It's not the most realistic and it does look a bit cartoony. But when you're at such a distance on the tabletop and they're all so tiny, it's nice to have these really high contrast things that just stand out and they look like what they're meant to look like. For things like the airport bit, I put these red landing pads on there, a couple of really bright yellows as well, just to kind of pick out some details, and that just helped it kind of stand out. And some of the buildings as well, I threw in some of those random colours just to pick out some bits, and again, it just helps it to really stand out against that dark grey. Once I'd done all of the random colours, I went back in there with a black oil wash and then sloshed that all over. And anybody who's watched the channel for any time knows that I really like a black oil wash. It just runs into all the bits very, very nicely. And the great thing is if you go too heavy with this, you can come back in with a Q-tip, dip it in some white spirits, and then wipe it off some of those top edges that you don't want it. So on the airports, for example, where I had that nice bright red, I went a little bit too heavy with the wash, but I was able to go back in there and wipe it up and just make those colors pop again. Once I'd done all the buildings, I went back in and had a look at the roads and I wanted to store the crosswalks. And I made a really stupid mistake here. Not that it doesn't look good, but it's because it cost me a lot of time. I decided that as well as the crosswalks being painted white, all the bits in the middle of the roads needed to be painted white as well. And I underestimated how many road pieces I printed off, so I was then doing these tiny little dots of white on all the roads for ages. Luckily, they are printed out already, so it's actually not too hard to do. It just took a long time. However, it does help it to pop a little bit more, and it just adds some more depth and realism to the overall finish, so I'm glad that I did it. It just took me quite some time. And once that was done, I assembled everything on the table, got it all laid out, I am really happy with the results so far. I've only painted about half of these buildings and there's other things on there. I've got like these sandbags, all these little barrels and everything else that also needs to be painted. And there's a whole load of other stuff as well that I wanted to print. I laid it out in this district idea. So you might be wondering why have I got these like residential modern day houses on there like the airport and stuff like that when I could just have a whole load of Gothic type buildings. But Every man and their dog is going to be doing the Gothic buildings and the stuff that Games Workshop sells is all the Gothic buildings. So I wanted to do something different and I thought it would make a lot of fun when it comes to narrative play. You could have something like the residential area where you've got one team trying to take the residential area, one team's got to try and defend it, the airport for example, and just set up some interesting stories to go around it. So it's not just two big armies fighting, you've actually got something that you're going to be doing and maybe doing something like a battle report to go alongside it. I've not decided yet, but I really like the idea of having all these different districts and different area types and just having a little bit more fun with and adding some story to the battles. I've also downloaded a bunch of trees and tokens and battle markers and explosions and everything else. So I need to get all those printed off and get them painted up as well. But let me know in the comments, is there anything else that you'd like me to print, maybe pick up from Games Workshop? Are there any other companies that are making this sort of scale stuff that you'd like me to check out and add to the battlefield? Let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Unfortunately, I did manage to pick up some pre-orders. So I got the pre-order starter box and I also got a couple of Titans and I also got a couple of airplanes. I'm definitely getting too far into this, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. And the idea is that all the stuff I picked up from Games Workshop, they'll probably end up being Blood Angels because why not? And then all my 3D printed stuff that I've got from the past, that's gonna remain being the, all the Empress children. I'm gonna have a big old battle and a lot of fun with this. So I can't wait to get my hands on this. Hopefully it will arrive on Saturday. It probably won't because post and stuff like that in the UK probably arrive next week. But once it arrives, I'll be getting it all sorted. I'll be doing some painting videos and then putting it all onto this battlefield along with all the other stuff I've got printed. For all the bits that I have printed, I will do my best to get everything linked up on my website. So I'll have a link down below in the description. So if you wanna find any of these like road pieces, any of the buildings, any of the other bits that I've printed, I'll have them all linked over on my website so that way you can print them out yourself as well. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. And let me know, are you going to be picking up any from Allegiance Imperialis? I'm really excited. The rules look fun. The game looks fun. The minis are actually relatively reasonably priced as well for Games Workshop, which kind of blew my mind. So yeah, here we go. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye.